Hi all, Larry Feldman with a lesson on non-continuous interest compounding. I'll be talking about continuous compounding in another video. In this video I want to focus on uh, the equation that is on the screen A equals P times the quantity 1 plus R over N all raised to the NT. Uh, there are, as you can see there are a lot of uh, variables here. So let's go through them. Uh, as, I, as I wrote, A is the final amount and P is the principal. So if you invest an amount of money, P, at a specific time, A will be the amount of money that you have after a certain amount of time, T, elapses. And that's also assuming that you have an annual interest rate of R and you are compounding the interest n times per year. And um, the more often you compound an interest, excuse me, the more times you compound interest per year, the faster your money grows because you're essentially earning interest on your interest. So let's, um, let's do a couple examples here. Um, the first thing I want to do is find the amount of money one would have if they started with a principal of fifteen hundred and um, they invested fifteen hundred dollars in an account with an annual interest rate of five percent now this is very important you have to convert percent to decimal so 5% is 0 0.05. And let's assume that you're investing the money for three years. And this is this can be the tricky part. What is N? Well, let's say the interest is compounded monthly. So if the interest is compounded monthly, you are compounding the interest 12 times per year. So all we need to do to find A, and I'll just write A equals question mark here, and uh, let's, make, let's make some room here. I'll leave the formula. How do we find A? We simply substitute in the, the values that we have. A equals 1,500 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 all to the NT so we have 12 times 3 up here so let's simplify this a little bit more we have 1500 uh, excuse me 1500 dollars times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 to the 36th power 12 times 3 is 36. Now using a calculator we would find out that the final amount is simply one thousand seven hundred forty two dollars and twenty one cents. So in this example the person started with fifteen hundred dollars and after three years they ended up with seventeen hundred and forty two dollars roughly. Now this is an application of the formula in a, in a very straightforward manner where we're solving for A. But frequently you'll want to solve for different variables such as the interest rate, uh, the, the number of times interest must be compounded, um, the principal or time. So you can really solve for any of the any of the excuse me any of the variables as long as you know the other ones. So let's look at another example. I'll clear this out. And let's let's solve for um, P at this stage. So let's say that you have a person that, that wants to buy a car for twenty thousand dollars five years from now the question is how much should that person put in the bank today so that they'll have 
$20,000 in five years. So in this case, we um, let's list let, let's list what we have and and what we and what we're trying to find. We know that the final amount is twenty thousand dollars. We're trying to we're trying to find the principal. We don't know how much the person needs to start saving today. Let's assume that the that the annual interest rate is four percent. So again, we need to convert that to decimal so we have 0.04 the amount of time until the person needs to buy the car is five years and let's assume in this case that the number of times the interest is compounded is quarterly excuse me let's assume the interest is compounded quarterly now a quarter is three months long so that means that the interest is compounded four times per year now, sub, uh, substituting in what we have, we sub in 20,000 for A. We don't know P, so we just leave that as a variable. 1 plus 0.04 divided by N, all to the NT. So that is 4 times 5. Be careful of order of operations here. So we have 20,000 equals P times 1 plus 0.04 divided by 4 raised to the 20th. And, you know, we're going to need to use a calculator again. But we're solving for P. So all we need to do is divide both sides by this quantity, 1 plus 0.04 over 4 to the 20th. When we do that, that cancels with that, and we're left with P. And using a calculator, we get P equals 16,391 roughly. So let's examine this a little bit a little bit more. Um, a person needs to start saving today by putting $16,391 in an account that is compounded quarterly or every three months at an annual interest rate of 4% for five years so that they end up with $20,000 at the end so that they so that he or she can buy the car. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, in this case, let's assume that someone wants to double his or her money. So, and we're not even going to specify how much money the person is starting with. We're not going to specify P. All we know is that the goal is to double is to double the principal. But let's assume a few things. Let's assume that the annual interest rate is 6%, so again we convert that to decimal, 0.06, and let's assume that the money is compounded annually, so n is 1 in this case. So how could, how could we figure this out? We don't, it might appear at first glance that we don't have enough information, but, but we actually do. If the person wants to double the principal, we know that the final amount, A, must be 2 times P. So let's, let's substitute everything into the equation at the top. We have 2P equals P times 1 plus R over N, 0.06 divided by 1, so I'm not going to write that, 
raised to the nt, and n is 1, so I'm just going to write t there. Now notice if we divide both sides by p, that cancels with that, that cancels with that. We get 2 equals 1.06 to the t. Now, we need to use logarithms to solve this problem. So, for example, we could take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 2 equals natural log of 1.06 raised to the t. Let's come up here. Natural log of 2 equals, and remember when dealing with logarithms, if there's an exponent, you can bring it to the front. We have t times the natural log of 1.06. I'm being a little inconsistent with my parentheses, but hopefully that's not uh, too confusing. Now all we need to do is divide both sides by natural log of 1.06. That cancels with that, and we get t equals natural log of 2 over natural log of 1.06. Now, using your calculator, we get 11.9 years. So, this is kind of an interesting case. Um, we don't even need to know what the principle is. We just need to know that the person wants to double the principal and given the other information like the annual rate, the, the uh, number of times they want to compound per year and um, the fact that they want to double, we can calculate the time. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the last example. In this last example, let's assume that the final amount is $5,000 the initial amount or principal is 2000 the um, interest is compounded semi-annually which means it's compounded twice per year and let's assume that the time is seven years and we want to find out the annual interest rate that we would need to turn 2000 to 5000 under these conditions so again we just substitute the information 5,000 equals 2,000 times 1 plus r over n to the nt. So this is n times t. Let's simplify. We can divide both sides by 2,000. That cancels. 5,000 divided by 2,000 is two and a half. This becomes one plus r over two to the fourteenth. And now what we need to do is raise both sides to the one over fourteenth power. And the reason why is because, I will show you, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So 14 times 1 over 14 is 1. So we get 2.5 to the 1 14th. And using my calculator, that is 1.068. And here we just have 1 plus r over 2. So now coming up here, we subtract 1. So we get 0 0.068. That was pretty messy. Let's start over. 0 0.068 equals r over 2. Multiplying both sides by 2, we get r equals 0.135. And converting to percentage form, that's 13.5%. So in summary, if someone invests $2,000 in an account earning 13.5% annual interest, compounded semi-annually for seven years, they will end up with $5,000. That's it for now. Hope that was helpful, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.